my sculptures. I usually start with a drawing with an idea. Then I find a piece of wood, I measure it and I cut it to the size that I need. Then I rough it out with a chainsaw, with a hatchet and with a rotary tool. Then I bring it into my studio. I draw on it and I carve away using my hatchet, saw, and chisels. I continue to carve into it and keep drawing on it till I get close to the piece. And this is the final sculpture. So this is a sculpture that I started outside, roughing it out. And now I get to this stage and I bring it into my studio. Now to continue sculpting, I start with a saw and a hatchet. If there's areas that I need to notch out, I can use my saw. And I'll take my saw and I will carve into, I will saw into the sculpture as far as I need to go. Then I will take my hatchet the areas that I notched into. Then for larger areas, I will use my hatchet. Any large areas that I can take off, I will use my hatchet. Then when I get my sculpture, down to areas that I can't use the hatchet and saw anymore. Then I switch to my hand, my uh, carving tools. As you can see, I have a whole range of tools. The carving tools, some here, and then some in the back over here too. The traditional way to do it in Japan is you put your sculpture against a block of wood, and then you hold the sculpture with your foot so you don't need a clamp to hold it. I start off with my larger tools. Then I can switch to different size tools to a smaller tool. Then, for the details, I switch to my hand tools. And I use these tools, these are just that you, you carve by hand. And then I'll carve into it with this tool. So these tools are handmade tools made um, by a person in Kyoto. And these tools, you can sharpen them all the way down to here. So these are almost like a lifetime tool because all of this metal from here down to here, you can sharpen, keep sharpening your tool. Okay. And then um, for the hand, the hand chisels, you buy just this metal. So this tool and then you make your own handles you, you take a block of wood and you split it you carve out the inside so it matches your tool and then you glue it back together and what's nice about these tools is these tools you can sharpen all the way down to here so all this metal you can sharpen away and then when your blade gets shorter and shorter you take some wood chips and you put it in here, and then that keeps your blade so it's exposed here. 
So I start sharpening tools. Sharpening tools is an art form in itself. So you start with a rougher uh, stone, and these are water stones, so they're soaked in water. Then you can take your tool, and for these round tools here, you can see how it's shiny here. Then you try to line it up so you're right at that right angle. So the, uh, um, the goal is that you want this side to be perfectly flat. So you, so it's a, you don't want it to get, be rounded, you want it to be a flat surface. And this took the most training was sharpening tools. So you sharpen your chisels. And once you use the rough stone, it um, dull, dulls out your, the shiny edge here. Okay, I'm going to do one more tool. So for our chisels that are flat, I will dip it in water. I'll find that right angle. So, so that side is perfectly flat. I'm using my elbow as a guide. And I want to keep it at that same angle the whole time. And the goal is not to round out that flat side there. And so you have this whole side kind of dulled out. Then you just touch it on the other side to take off that burr. Then we switch to the finer stone. Also, wet it with water. And this same thing, I'm finding that edge. And I go across that edge. And I try to use the whole stone. So I don't round out the stone, but keep the whole stone flat. So I do this one side. And then I switch, take off the burr with the other side. Okay, and then with the round tool, the round tool, I do the same thing with my fine stone here, and I sharpen it, and I try to sharpen it so I get this whole side become shiny again. And then we have these round sharpening stones here. Find a stone that matches your curve. And then you just touch it on the side to take off that burr again on that. Carving with stone. When I start and want to take large pieces off, I will drill holes into the stone and insert these wedges. I will tap on each wedge a little at a time until the stone cracks. And then it splits. Then I will use larger hand chisels and break off larger pieces. And then switch to hand chisels, smaller hand chisels for the details. And always drawing on the stone as I work. So, so first this is a power tool. This is a diamond blade that you can put on here. This is for cutting into the stone. This blade is a grinder blade, so for smoothing out surfaces on the stone. These are uh, wedges. 
So in the first photographs that I showed, we drill a hole into the stone, put these wedges in, and then tap on these wedges one at a time, and we can split the stone. These tools here, these are the largest tools that we use for, for hand carving, for taking off large pieces of stone. These tools, they have a carbide tip on them, and you really whack it with the hammer. And you can take large pieces of stone off with these tools. And this tool is an edging tool. So if you want to break off an edge, hit it like this and you can break off an edge of the stone. So these are the hand tools we use. As you can see, there's all different sizes here. So if I want to go in for detail, I can go in with a... So, so the usual way is you go in with a point chisel to take off large areas. And then you go in with a tooth chisel to smooth that out. And then you go in with your flat chisels to smooth that out even more. So this you can get your smooth surfaces with a with this chisel. And then going in for detail. So if I do detail on the face here. These are some examples of some current work that I've done. This is Osatsu holding a broom. Osatsu holding the world. This was a recent commission of Osatsu holding a viola. This was for a woman that just contracted cancer and is a viola musician. Kanon Bosatsu, out of marble, and some recent Jizo sculptures made out of marble and granite.